and welcome to Hopeful Conversations. I'm Vicky Montague and today I'm joined by Maria Wood. And as is the case with many of my guests here, I don't know very much about Maria and I'm really excited to have this conversation to find out more about her. Um, what I do know is that she has recently published a book called A Caged Mind, which I'm really, really curious to find out more about. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to kind of hand straight over to Maria, really. Um, and yeah, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about your, your journey into, into writing and uh, how you came about writing a book called A Caged Mind, which just, it, it ties in so beautifully with the name of my business, which is Free From Limits. And, and I always envisage that we were effectively, um, you know, creating a, a, creating a kind of box for ourselves and that, mm -hmm those those limits are self-created that we can we can free ourselves from those so your, your your the title of your book just makes me really curious to find out more so yeah if you could yeah. tell us a little bit about that that's so spooky isn't it because that's yeah. exactly what the, that is exactly what the book is about yeah. um i just want to say most people will know me as maria eilif would um so that's the um my author name my pen name and my business and my business name um but yeah, and A Caged Mind is exactly um, that. It's about my story. And it's not a it's not a chronological story in any way, shape, or form, but it's um it's lots of, of little stories that show how um how my mind used to operate compared to how it operates now with a with a completely different and different understanding about how life works and how you know the 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 metaphor is the cage over our heads um, that um, is there and we don't realize that we've created this cage um, and the beauty of it is um, the, the door is always open to the cage like we are we, are, we can be free of the cage at, at any time um, and yeah um, all it takes is insight really and what I hope is that people will read the book they'll read the the stories they'll see how life is different for me now compared to how it was in all sorts of different ways and and they'll have insights for themselves which will help them to to kind of get free of their cage of thinking because because the vast majority of people are living in some kind of cage it might be it might be really tight it might be quite quite big and loose but that there's still an element of limitations that we put on ourselves. And, and it's not that, you know, I can't say, oh, it was this and it was this and it was that, and this is what was different um, or what the, or really what the insights were that made the changes um, because a lot, a lot of insights happen and you don't even realize that they're, they're happening. And if you, if you're lucky enough sometimes to notice some of them, which we do notice some of them, and you can feel that you change, but you can't always put words to, to what it is exactly. But something shifts and then you find yourself doing things or being in a situation where you're responding differently to a situation. And it's like, oh, this is, this is different. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, and what you realise is that the, the, the cage is, is gradually the illusion of the cage is, or you're seeing the illusion of the cage, and the, and in seeing that the cage, the cage disappears, and you have a different experience of of life. So, um, yeah, that just says a, a little bit. That says a little bit about the book. It doesn't say much about how it came to be, but <laughs> yeah, and and I guess in that, like, I'm really curious to know more about the cage. Like, I guess, like what's that made from I mean I know but for the sake of uh, people listening I'd love you to talk more about what what you see that's made from and also maybe bring that to life in um, you know, what was that for you what did that look like for you well I suppose the cage for me looked like imposter syndrome or it looked like um this undercurrent of fear and anxiety an undercurrent of nobody really likes me what would they like about me 
you know, if they're, if they're friends with me, they're just being kind. <laughs> um, it would be things like being scared that the rug's going to be pulled out from under my feet any time. You know, my business is going to crash. I'm going to lose all my income. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to end up homeless. Um, it looked like being in relationships with guys that were not healthy, where I was diminished somehow in the relationship, where I was almost like two different people. At work, I would be one person and at home, I'd be a completely different person. Um, so that's kind of how the, the cage showed up in my in my life. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't say that the, the cage, it didn't disappear in a, in a, you know, a puff of smoke, you know, it wasn't abracadabra, <laughs> abracadabra and, it, and it's all gone. Um, but, you know, I came across the principles or I was introduced to them, um, in 2013. And what I see now is that the insights didn't start happening the moment that I started to see the principles. Insights had been happening for many years before. When, when I look back over my life, I can see at different times, you know, we have we have a thought that comes from somewhere. It feels like it comes from within us um, and it shifts and changes. And those things have been happening all our lives. Um, but the difference for me was that once I came across the principles, it, it kind of highlighted that to me, how that has already been happening and drew my attention towards that rather than my attention towards all the negative thinking that I had. And so some, somewhere along the line, instead of paying attention to all the negative thinking, the other, the other thing that's just occurred to me how it all showed up was, um, you know, I used to beat myself up for everything. Like I had a whole load of judgment going on in my head about, you know, what I should and shouldn't be doing and how I should and shouldn't be working and what, you know, um, you know, how, you know, terrible I was at everything that I ever did, you know, and all of that kind of thinking. And so realizing and paying attention to other kinds of thinking, you know, that, 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 that I don't need to pay attention to all of that. Um, and so yeah, over over time, one of the ways that I, I talk about it in the in the book is that all of these insights that you have, it's not a linear, it's not a linear process. It's not this insight, then this insight, then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then, you know, over that time things have happened and now I'm a different person. I'm the same person underneath everything. One of the things that I used to think was that if I could get enlightened. I would feel like somebody else, like I wouldn't feel like me. And, and it took me a while to realize that, oh, I'm always going to feel the same. I'm always going to feel like me. But the difference is my experience of how I experience everything is different. Like It's like I still feel like me. I've never felt any different, but I don't have that undercurrent of anxiety or the undercurrent of worry. And, and I don't beat myself up all the time. And, you know, I'm just not doing all of that stuff. But when I look back and, and part of um, what happens when I'm writing through my writing is I can see all of these different things. And I can it's almost like I can trace the breadcrumbs back a bit and I can see how you know, like a dot to dot game, you know, in a children's book, you have the dot to dots and you join the dots and you don't know what the picture is until you pretty much finish joining the dots up. For me, that's how our evolution works. Like it's lots and lots of different dots and insights. Each dot is maybe an insight and some of them are bigger dots than other dots and um, you don't always realize them, but it's like they all start to join up until at some point you it, it makes a, a bigger and a different picture to the one that you thought it was. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. I love that idea. Yeah. And, and I think when I first came across the three principles, I, I was quite, 
I don't know whether confused is the word, but I was quite um, unsure what an insight was. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'd love to hear you talk more about that because I know that there's people that will be listening to this that won't know even what the three principles are. Yeah. And the, the word insight for me was quite a mystery. It was like this kind of thing that I needed to have in order for things to look different or for things to change. And, and that, I think that idea has changed for me over, over time. And Mm -hmm. now how I see it is that, you know, it's very, can be very small little things that we just see differently just through, through, through an understanding of something. Um, yeah so I'm just I'm curious to know like you know what 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 would you say to someone who just didn't understand what that was what's what's an insight and maybe you've got an example of one that comes to mind that you can share that was you know integral to your your journey Mm. I think what one of the things that is I think is a really easy thing to get confused about is thinking that an insight has words to it uh, or has language to it I mean you do hear lots of people and and me too where you realize you've had an insight and then you and then you put words to it and and you almost think it's the words that's the insight and and what I found is more and more that um and the insight is not words. It's it, it it's not. It's actually not the words that we put to it that is the insight. So the insight is. I had this conversation with Linda Pettit as well the other mm-hmm. the other day. We were talking about that as well. Um, it's it's more a feeling, but it's not. You, you, it's not always got a feeling to it. Like sometimes, so I remember my first big 3P ins- insight. I didn't know it was a big 3P insight. I didn't know it until several years later. So I was at a, a conference. It was the first time I'd ever heard anybody talk about the principles. I'd not read anything. Um, my husband had been uh, reading a three uh, Michael Neal's book, Inside Out Revolution, um, while I was writing my first book. And I wasn't interested in hearing anything about it because I was so focused on my (laughs) book. And when I finished writing it, Dick and Bettinger was over in the UK for one of his early, early visits. And I agreed to to go and see him. And on the way, um, I said, this Dick and Bettinger guy, he's, um, I think he's a big guy in, in America with this thing that Michael Neal talks about inside out revolution. I think he knows his stuff. So I think it's going to be um, a good few days. And there was a point where he was talking about, he was talking about the intelligence behind life. And he was talking about a wallflower that grows up the side of his house. And when it gets to the window, it turns right. <laughs> and then when it gets to the end of the window, it, it goes up again. And there was something in there that I felt like, you know, the the locks on a safe that turn, it was, the feeling was like one of those locks had turned and turned and clunk and clicked into place. So there was this feeling of something and it was to do with the intelligence of life. Something in the intelligence of life is in me somehow. I don't quite know what or anything, but there was certainly something um, like that. And and there's a point when Dickens says, is anybody seeing anything? And and, um, to my husband's absolute utter amazement, I stood up and and (laughs) tears rolling down my face, really pouring out of me. Um, I couldn't articulate what it was, Mm. but I knew that something had happened um and yeah something I don't know I don't know what um and I left the conference we were there for three days I left the conference and nothing nothing really 
Um, I forgot about it. Um, it was interesting stuff. Um, I was really interested and in, intrigued to find out more. So I, I started, we did loads of stuff, done loads of stuff more. And then four years ago, so what would that be? Maybe longer, um, 2013. So probably five, six years later, I'm writing about that moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as I'm writing about it, I feel the whole experience again. And, and I realise with the benefit of hindsight and with the benefit of everything that's happened in the intervening years, that that insight was huge. It was massive, but I had no clue in the moment. I, what I didn't have, I knew something had happened, I had no understanding of insights of a spiritual essence, who we are underneath everything had none of that understanding so in that moment of having this massive shift because I had no understanding I didn't know what it was so I paid it no attention whatsoever but it still changed me yeah it still changed me forever it's like undeniably changed as a result of that and then I would find myself in situations where I would be acting different and and it would have a feeling of Hmm, this is this is unusual, but not really, not even not linking it to that, because there's lots of other insights that happen along the way. So we can we can have a really big insight and completely miss it in a way. And so I think we get we it's really easy to get hung up on having insights. Like, you know, we don't really know what's happening. We don't know which insights are going to affect us. We don't know how they affect us. Um, so, so for me, it's like, let's not worry too much about insights. Let's just keep looking in this direction. Because uh, quite a few times now, you know, sometimes, you know, I have a regular conversation with Dickon and, um, you know, sometimes I think, yeah, it's just been a nice, it's been a nice conversation. I've not really felt any particular changes or insights and then at some point I, I know something's something's different and, and so for me all I keep paying attention to now is not whether I've had an insight or not but just keep noticing what's going on for me in life um, and things change and I know in my head like I have a much easier time of life in my in my own head and then sometimes I get caught up in in some of that old thinking, and there's a the the was, and can be a tendency to think, oh God, I've gone back to where I was, mm -hmm. but actually I've never I've never gone back to the way that I was. Sometimes we feel it, um, and we get worried that oh we've lost it, and but it's never it's not it's not the same experience at all as it was before, with all, with all that awareness, so. It's it's a tough it's a tough one is insights I think yeah um, you know some people one of the things when I was talking to Linda we talked about it being a deep knowing mm -hmm. but sometimes sometimes there's not even a knowing that comes with it no. I love what you just shared because it is often confused with like things being immediately changed or that there's some words that we can put to it but my experience I think is really similar to that there's a there's just a, a uh, it's just a feel it's like a feel like a feeling that there's something something's different but there's nothing available to describe that yeah and I think often when I'm working with people and you know, we're, as we're all inclined to do, we kind of look to see, or oh, what difference has this made? You know, what difference has has it made having these conversations? What difference has this coaching made? And and often, I think it's so hard to actually put into words the difference because it's a sense, and it's not it's not always a a tangible kind of obvious thing immediately. Like yeah. you say, I love what you said about you know years later you realize looking back that 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 one 
insight had been huge and had had a massive impact on your life but had you been asked three months afterwards what impact it had, had you wouldn't have known you just might have felt different but yeah not in a definable and not, way and not made the link yeah yeah you know you know I, I, I've worked with people and there's the um you know they don't realize that they don't even realize that they're changing mm -hmm. um but but as their coach I can see them changing um and and you know and I let go a long time ago of wanting to be credited with <laughs> yeah you know as a coach it's easy like we're helping people then this is the change that they want to make and then you know if we help them if we help them make the change then you know we've done our job and we can we can see it we kind of had to to let go of all of that because sometimes it's they they'll have a, we might have a conversation um and and they might have an insight outside of the coaching which they can see and feel and 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 have a different experience and it has no connection in their mind it has no connection with with anything that has gone on in the in the conversation we have to when we're helping people we really have to trust in this intelligence behind life and not seek to not seek to get any credit for it really um because it's not always yeah it's not always a done deal either no and I think what's beautiful is, is it, it's, um, for me, it's about opening up the possibility that's within everybody. And, and, and when, when that's opened, it's like a little door is open, then things happen out, might happen out there that uh, feel like they're completely unrelated, but it's, it's to do with a door opening yeah it's just yeah. that's just so beautiful isn't it yeah it is it's really to know lovely. that possibility is there <clears throat> for everybody once they get a glimpse of where experience is coming from mm. and that and that as you say the cage door is open it's always been open it reminds me of the um the story of the elephant that was you know chained up all its life and walked around in a circle and then the chain was taken away and it still walked around in the circle and that mm, you know, know but, story, but oh, yeah. it's so beautiful and it's like that's that's what we do right we yeah. we collect we innocently collected conditioning and beliefs and ideas and experiences and we collected it all up and and that's dictating our behaviors in, mm. you know in the in a completely subconscious way yeah and then when we become conscious of that we get to see that we get to see that there's nothing actually there that we can walk away and I love that it's so beautiful mm. so in terms of your book mm -hmm. where can where can people find it how can people find out about because you, you said that you were a coach I don't know whether you want to tell us a little bit more about um about that and mm. and obviously I want to know where I can get hold of the book <laughs> um so yeah yeah so the the book's on Amazon um I've tried tried to get it into bookstores but it's it's not as easy to get them into bookstores as as um possible so it it might be available on waterstones it might be available on barnes and noble it might take a bit longer to get um through those um but certainly it's available on amazon um so i've got to, there's two aspects to my work so there's the all the work that i do with writers so if people um, want to to see what I do in terms of writing my website is um ilif-wood.co.uk um and um, I'm on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn if people want to um to find me there I'm also on Instagram and Twitter but I'm um shutting those down a little bit I can't spread myself no. anymore um but also I work with leaders and I work with coaches. Um, so that can be found on a website called fromquiet.co.uk. But the, the thing is, regardless of what I'm working with, the thing that I know that I'm doing, regardless of who I'm working with, is I'm always pointing them back to the same thing. So always pointing them back to their inner wisdom, their own inner guide, um, you know, the source of, of, of everything, even if I'm helping them with writing the book, publishing the book, 
um, all that kind of thing. It, for me, it's all the same thing because when I when I first started the publishing business, that I had a bit of noise going on because it was so not what I was, or I thought it was so not what I was doing before. You know, I've been a, a coach for for donkeys years. Um, that's that's what I do. Um, so to be helping people publishing a book felt like it was something completely different. And then actually I had a realization that, oh, no, I'm still, no matter what I'm doing, I'm still pointing people in the direction of their own wisdom because I don't say to people, this is what you should or shouldn't do in terms of publishing your book or how to edit the book or how to craft their book or what the book is about. I say, okay, this is what I'm seeing around your book. And you need to know, you need to tell me what, if I'm publishing it, what feels right to you. Like it's not accept my word for anything. So again, all I'm doing still is pointing them back to the, in the direction of their own wisdom and their own intuition and their own knowing about what's, what's right or not for, for their book. And I imagine that's hugely different from how other, potentially how other, publishers and how other uh you know people work where it's more of a it has to be like this and it needs to look like that um so I don't I mean I don't know I've never published a book I don't know anything about writing or um but that to me sounds quite unique um yeah I I think it is it's definitely um different in terms of you know some of the people that were involved in the muse book had already published before and the way that I um, kind of held them through the process was was very very different to what they'd experienced through their traditional publishing houses uh, because I suppose for for publishers generally it's a commercial proposition it's a book it's a task it's this then this then this then this then this uh, which obviously all of that is involved um, but for me where I'm coming from is the book isn't the the book isn't the outcome in a way the the it's it's a byproduct of of the work that we um, that I'm doing with people and um and even though I'm not I'm not overt in saying that this is what I'm doing in terms of you know I'm not saying to them I'm here to help you find your inner wisdom when people come to work with me they come to me because they want to write a book or they want to find out what their book is about because they don't really know yet or they do want to publish the book so they come to me for that um, and um, underneath all of that the direction that I'm pointing them to is this um, you know their their own self-esteem their own worth their own um inner wisdom because publishing a book is is often a scary experience even for people who have a 3P understanding, a whole load of stuff comes up um, when, with, with the vulnerability that comes with putting their story on the page. So it can be quite a scary experience. So help guiding them and helping them through that back to their own wisdom um, is all part and parcel of it. So, um, yeah, I do think I hadn't thought of it before. So I really appreciate that, Vicky. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, it is it is different to what other publishers would um, would be focused on so anyone that has an idea for a book or would or has a dream of writing a book or anything like that they could come to you and 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 work with you to kind of make that a, an actual thing yes how cool yes <laughs> amazing I'm sure there'll be people listening who would be excited by that prospect so yeah, yeah. me too actually <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I, have two, I have two new programs starting in the new year. Well, I've actually got three programs starting in the new year. So I've got there's two aimed at writers. One is for people who already know what their book is about, but they haven't yet got on with writing it. So the idea is that over a period of six weeks, they they get a, there's two aspects to it. There's a body of work gets done in that period of week towards their book and they start to get a feel for and an understanding for what their writing process is. So again, it's a different, it, it, work, it operates on different levels. So it uh, operates on the level of getting a book written. It operates on the level of understanding how it all works in order to get a book written. And also it helps them to um, get out of their own way 
mm. be able to to write a book um, and then the other program is for people who think they want to write a book but they don't know what it's about yet or they're kind of stuck so it's a it's a it's a different it's a different um um series of it's still six weeks a different series of of exercises and things which also operates at different uh, different levels and and i think again that what that points to is what you were saying earlier is that it's not it it's not just about getting a book written it's not just about getting the book published there's there's a whole a whole lot of other things that are being held yeah. in all that space and the other the other program is entirely different which is based on the book cage mind i've got a program starting the taster session is on the 2nd of december um and we go through each of the different parts there's eight parts to the book e each each week we meet and we reflect on a, the each of the different um parts of the book and that's really, that is pointing to the spiritual understanding wow amazing i will i will put all of the information um in the notes so that you can, you can find out more about all those Brilliant. amazing offerings that you have thank you and, so much uh, yeah it's been amazing having you here thank you so much for coming thank on you. and uh, i'm sure i will be exploring your website <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <laughs> thank you so much maria thank you take care bye-bye